next speaker is uh, Rodrigo Porto from uh, Brazil. He's coming from uh, Campinas. Campinas, yes. And uh, he's going to tell us all about uh, new developments uh, in Crowium in Brazil. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Ludo. Um, so, uh, what I will go through today is uh, we are not there yet. Okay, so most of the problems, mo most of the things that we are discussing here, some of them are quite, I would say, common to many facilities. Some of them are still not a problem for us, like because we're still starting. But what I would try to give you is an overview of what we've been doing and how, how things are going there, what are the groups and what are the um, infrastructure and people in CryVM in Brazil. Okay, so first of all, uh, when I was uh, invited by Ludo to, to give this talk, it came to me uh, this question, well, but when did it start? Like, how did it start? And I remember once that I was talking to uh, Raul Padron about how cryo started in Latin America. So I asked him to you know, prepare some slides, give me some uh, historical overview on that. And that's what I will start discussing now. And this is uh, Humberto Fernandes Moran. And actually, he was the, the founder of this center in Venezuela, the Institute for Neuro Neurology and Brain Research that later on came EVIC, where actually it was the first center in Latin America for, for cryo -EM. So this picture was taken in 97, but actually he was working way before than that. And he was in Chicago working with cryo-electron microscopes, uh, cryo-temperatures of helium. And so he was himself uh, one of the pioneers in the field. And then uh, this is Raul Padron when he was uh, in MRC labs. And he told me that actually this this experience there influenced him uh, very much. So when he came back to Venezuela, he came with this proposal of uh, starting a structural biology center there and working with uh, cryo-EM. So, and that what he did, and he found this, uh, or first a group, uh, Department of Structural Biology, and then later on it became the Philips and FI Latin America Center for Cryo-Electron Microscopy. And this picture, if you, if you check this picture, you see some faces like Wim Wuhot, Wim Busing, Raul Padron, and Fernando Mendonça. So this was actually the first, uh, to the extent of my knowledge, the first Cryo-EM initiative in Latin America, and that was uh, Raul Padron, that actually he worked with uh, Fernandes uh, Moran, but uh, he was not there anymore. So that was 2007, and in that center, uh, Raul Padron worked with myosin interact headings, mo motives of mostly myosin, and he's still working in this field, and now sharing uh, his time between Venezuela and uh, uh, Massachusetts Me Medical School with Roger Craig, so now, as far as I know, he's moving for two years there where they want to do a high-resolution high model of the, the, the myosin. So that was the story of the, let's say, the, the, the pioneers. And by that time, when Hau was really working hard, I was doing my PhD in São Carlos, Brazil, when I happened to met but in Van Hill, and that's why, that's where, like, the story of Eliane Nanopart uh, starts, and that was 2004, when he was a vis visiting professor there. And from that point on, uh, some developments in Brazil started to happen. So the first one was this school that uh, we had the eighth version in 2018, but it actually started in 2005, so there are lots of schools that happen in Brazil. Uh, most of them were collaborations between Leiden University. Uh, Ellen Nano San Marin was in, in Leiden. So there was this involvement going through Imperial College in London, uh, Leiden University, Ellen Nano, and actually having Marine in, in this collaboration, we also have this uh, grant application that ran from 2013 to 2015 to have him as a, a visiting professor uh, being a few months per year in Brazil. 
So that actually gave us access uh, to Nessing as well, like we had a few students coming to Nessing and a few data collections running here. So and, and last year, Marine became a full-time professor at Ellen and Anno. So that's the, the part of the story I know. So, yeah. Okay, so how things are uh, now in Brazil? Uh, this is an overall view of the structural biology groups, at least the, like the major structural biology groups in Brazil. Um, we have many of them in the state of Sao Paulo, this area here where Campinas is here, so the synchrotron facility is here, uh, also the, the LN Nano uh, laboratory. And if we check how many of them are using microscopy, so those are the ones that we are aware that are using cryo-electron microscopy or for material science or for life science or even like negative stain, but somehow using electron microscopy or cryo-EM in structural projects or, or material science, okay? So uh, we have a few uh, important ones and, and especially if we go for the ones that have facilities, because for instance, here in Goiânia, we have a cryo facility, Fortaleza is the same, here in Pernambuco, Porto Alegre. But I'd like to point out like three of them, which is uh, Belo Horizonte, Rio de Janeiro, and Campinas, Campinas being Elenano Senepain, that are actually doing major efforts on cryo -EM. Okay, So first of all, we have the infrastructure in, in Rio de Janeiro. So Rio de Janeiro probably uh, today has the, the most complete um, preparation, uh, sample preparation for cryo-EM facility in Brazil. They have basically all the techniques available. Not only that, they have like uh, different uh, types of uh, electron microscopes, also light microscopy. So all the aspects of bioimaging is what they are uh, putting together there. Okay. So this is Rio de Janeiro. Then we have Belo Horizonte. And this is the center in Belo Horizonte. Uh, this is a bit newer. This building is operating since, since 2006. This is completely dedicated to, to electron microscopy. These areas are for the electron microscopes. Here we have sample preparation and, and personal. Uh, over the last five years, they've been investing in cryo-EM sample preparation. So, and now in December, they are about to be open to external users in data sample preparation and data collection. Okay, so but they, they are uh, also uh, investing to have a good cryo-EM facility. Okay, in, in their case, they have some uh, international collaborations already collaborating with King's College in Okinawa. Uh, they are organizing a course now for December, and uh, those are uh, the speakers, like many, coming from uh, EU, and uh, they, they are uh, quite keen to more and more get involved with cryo techniques. So th those are the two centers, uh, and the, the third one would be Alien Nano that I will speak now. So, first of all, Elian Nano here, actually this is a bit old, so the building is a bit bigger now. Uh, Elian Nano is here, it's part of CENEPEN, okay, which is the National Center for Research in Energy and Materials that has four national laboratories. So we have Elian Nano, we have the Synchrotron <coughs> Laboratory here, we have the Biosciences here, and we have a Bioethanol Laboratory here. Okay. And the, Synchrotron is actually now building the Sirius. So this is the new synchrotron, like the first electrons, the first run of the electrons should be done by the end of the year. Uh, and we can see here in the back the rest of the center. So it's a massive construction. And how we operate. So uh, there are four uh, main axis of operation. So we, we have the open facilities, like we operate open facilities, and when we talk about open facilities, we refer to researchers from outside Senepain, okay? 
we have in-house research and then the facilities can also be used for in-house research. Uh, of course, we have to disseminate knowledge like education and training, not only our users, but also like providing courses on techniques that we, we have and support to innovation, like we, uh, acting together with companies, providing services or projects together. Okay. Uh, we have this four, four divisions, like characterization, advanced characterization, in, in case of uh, synthesis, synthesis goes for like nanoparticle synthesis, different uh, projects on, on synthesis, nanotoxicology, nanomedicine, and devices, micro and nanofabrications of device. Electron microscopy is part of the, the advanced characterization. And to, in, uh, across these four divisions, we have these three different areas of research, where here we have like biological structures and structural characterization, and that goes together most of the time with LN Bio, which is the Bioscience National Laboratory. So we have a, a for a national labor laboratory, we have like a small uh, team of researchers. And in, in the field of electron microscopy, it's like me, Marin, and Jefferson Bettini, who is dedicated to material science. So more or less, this is the, the overall structure of the center. We have almost like half of uh, personnel in PhDs uh, master students and uh, undergrad students. Then we have 17 researchers plus 11 associated researchers, uh, technicians, a bit of administ administrative support, and uh, postdocs. A few numbers. So this is like articles from 2015 to 2017, publications from internal personnel like our uh, researchers, and, and sometimes here goes that discussion that, that we just have on when we get involved or not in publications. Um, number of users in our open facilities, that, that is for all the LN Nano, not only microscopy, but all the LN Nano, LN Nano facilities. Uh, I will show next what are the facilities. And here, uh, papers published by external researchers. Okay. When we go just for cryo-EM or negative stain, we have a much smaller numbers than that. So here is like overall papers published in, in cryo-EM or using negative stain or like life science or materials. And we see that it's just a, like a few uh, papers over the last three years. But then in 2016, it came to operation, the, the 1400 plus. It was more dedicated to cryo-EM, mostly material science, okay? And the Talus F200C, so this year we expect it to have, uh, counting the, the submitted ones, so it would jump to about 12 papers, okay? So these are the facilities that we have, and those here are all electron microscopy. So this is just to, to give an overall idea of number of proposals that we have in each equipment and in each facility. So LNN is actually uh, it, it used to deal with lots of different facilities and lot, lots of different users. So there is a, a, a website for like people putting proposals and that's where we follow the, the not only the application but the, the evaluation of the application like we have for electron microscopy, for instance, we have a scientific, external scientific committee, so it ha has, has to go through the committee. Then we have technical evaluation that goes uh, inside the facility. So all, all, all of this is evaluated in our case twice a year. Okay, so, so dealing with users is, is really part of the, the job of the, the, this laboratory. Um, and here, projects with companies. Uh, it is increasing over the last uh, few years, and it's good because in the future we also want. We have some projects in cryo EM with with companies, pharmaceutical companies mainly, but really initial projects, not really challenging projects yet. But more and more, we want to to get involved and, and get the companies uh, involved with that. Uh, and here, it's just like the overall. 
occupancy rate of EM facility. We have, this is all the equipments in 2017, in the first semester of 2018. This is just like everything compared to the, the full year. So it goes to something like 72% by the end of the year, if it happens the same of the first semester. And just a com as a comparison, the, the equipments that are dedicated to cryo are doing more or less the same as the facility, so things are running smoothly up to now. Uh, and here we have uh, the full set of equipments we have today. So in this, this line here, we have equipments mostly dedicated to uh, material science, so we have a Titan Themis, double corrected one. Uh, we have the Helios for uh, 3D uh, tomography and, and lamella preparation for the Themis. Uh, there are two more SEMs for material science. This one, sometimes we have something from life, life science, but it's not a, a cryo machine. These two equipments from Joel, the 2100F and 2100. They are kind of shared mostly. They are used for material science projects, but also uh, sometimes we can use that for uh, some st st structural biology projects. Okay, and these are the three that we are considering now uh, for cryo. Actually, we also have F200C that uh, it is operating, but it's still on the on the negotiation. Uh, so we have this one, the 1400, and as we discussed before, it's an excellent machine for like entry-level projects, training people. Mo most of our users are trained to operate the microscopes themselves. So actually, it's really good to start training people in this one. Although when we move to a different interface, uh, you have to adapt to the interface. But actually, the concepts, you can discuss the concepts and how you know, what you can do, what you cannot do in this equipment. It's also the first equipment that we allow users to use in after hours. Like if the user wants to come during nights or weekends, um, he will be first trained to do that in this equipment, in, in the case of uh, cryo uh, and, and life science. So in these two, actually, they arrived. The, the article is operating since in August, and this one, the, the Creos, we expect to have it operating by uh, January. Okay. Also in our pipeline, there are two more dual beam machines for different um, situations. Okay, so for this expansion, uh, we had to actually build a new uh, extension to the EM facility. So this is the original EM facility. It counts with six rooms for microscopes, SEMs, and, and TEMs. This is Eleni Nano and part of this building. And this area in blue had to be built to receive the new equipments. So, and this is the, the way it was done. So we, ha we have here six new rooms for the microscopes and three of them with space to have this extra room before the microscope, like in a way that we can isolate the area of the microscope and have the operation room in a, in a separated area. So we here have three labs, three areas for labs, and some of them will be dedicated to internal research, some of them uh, to external users. So users will be able to come and do part of the, the wet lab uh, needs in this, this area. We have these three already being used uh, for microscopes. The uh, GEM uh, 1400 Plus is installed here, the Arctica here, and the Creus here. We have then an area for staff, this room for staff. This room is for IT, so service uh, will, and storage will be here. And this area is just like storage for all the, the, the facility. So. Uh, what we did here is, was actually just repeat the same strategy that we had in the building before. So we just expanded using more or less the same project. So we didn't change much. And actually, this is how the rooms are made. So we have this concrete slab in the center of the rooms. Um, so if they can detail you here, so all the rooms have this as a stabilization slab for the microscopes. And actually, we can access this area, so we have this really 
a cozy area to go you know, underneath the, the the rooms is really tight it's but okay so that that was the the construction it took eleven months to be built, but that's because the project was basically the same project we just took the project we changed a few things and we expand so this this part in yellow here is the old EM facility we just expand this area through the uh, we had a parking lot here so we just expanded and now that's that's what we have now so this it's a new building. This store is uh, planned for all the boxes of the microscopes. They can come through this store. And actually, when the first talus arrived, we had to break part of one wall. So the door was a bit too short. So well, uh, doors were, was something that we changed in, in this one. So they're a bit bigger now, at least. Um, uh, we are still discussing if we have, if we will have liquid nitrogen just by the building to use in the microscopes with like lines or cylinders. So this is still under discussion. So this is the the planned facility for the end of this year, like beginning of next year. So as I said, this machine is is the one that is being used like every day, uh, all the hours. It's really fully booked. Um, and it's very versatile, so it's a, it's a very important machine for the facility, and especially because uh, we discussed a bit of that before. But like a project to 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 a cryo project arrive or, or be delivered in a machine like that, it has lots of steps that it has to go before. So, but we don't have a community of cryo EM uh, laboratories in, in Brazil. So actually, we have this problem of how they should provide the first image or the first screening if they don't have the infrastructure. So having this kind of equipment is important because some of the projects, they actually have to start, even screening, they have to start in, in, in the lab, like in the national lab. So they have to, unfortunately, uh, screening is something that has to be done in the lab. Uh, it's been really difficult to how to deal with that especially because it's difficult to book. You cannot book screening every six months, you know, like with the calls. Uh, so we are dealing on, on how, how to do that. And more and more, um, we expect the groups to have that kind of infrastructure in their own groups. But for now, it's important to have uh, at least these two machines for helping screening and this initial phase of the project, like how the project should develop in, in the beginning. So this one, start operating in August. Uh, there were a few problems that are now sorted. So I think by, by the end of it, the year, it will be uh, fully operating. Like, uh, and this one, uh, we, we, we already started building. So probably by January 2009, we'll have the, the Titan Creus operating. Okay, the configuration is, is like uh, BioQuantum K3, Face blades, Falcon 3 Aceta. This one has a Falcon 3. Um, and the 1400 has as a camera uh, one view. And all of them comes with software for tomography as well. So, so this is the current status. Uh, when I left, uh, there was the box. Probably they put the door now. And, and then by, I think by next week, they will start putting the column and, and actually installing the, the equipment. So by December, probably we, we have it uh, working. Uh, and the Talos actually is, is, is probably wor working. Okay. So this is uh, our group. So a few students and postdocs. Uh, Alexandre is the one of CryEM specialists uh, that works in the facility. Marcelo is, is the other one. And they are actually taking care of most of the, the work that is being done. And another guy, this, this guy he is, uh, here is actually from material science, but he's been very instrumental in all the building and, and setting up things like new microscopes. He's really good on that. He's uh, Fabiano. Okay. So m what we've been doing uh, by now is actually 
like preparing projects to be used by high-end facilities like Nessen and Diamond uh, and EBIC. So if, for instance, one, one of the projects that we had was on, on structure of hemocyanin, so we have different um, organisms here from Instituto Butantan in Sao Paulo, and we, we were doing like negative stain as we were discussing before, so we are preparing like uh, the cryo uh, conditions for preparation of the samples, and then shipping them. And actually, this was, this was done in this Science Without Borders project, and they were shipped to NASA. So the data collection was done here, and uh, people are now working on, on the maps and, and the structure, like the high resolution structure. So another project that we did more or less the same was uh, this this one. This is a type four secretion system, and we start with like negative stain and cryo, uh, checking for like different conditions of like protein breeds, all the sample preparation um, stuff. And w once the project was like ready for high resolution, then uh, th that's a project on uh, Institute of Chemistry in University of Sao Paulo, and then th they started a collaboration with Gabriel Waxman in Birkbeck, so they had access to diamonds, so they did a data collection, high resolution data collection, and processing the data, and this is uh, now uh, has been accepted and it's about to be published. So we also like to exploit the fact that we are in a material science center. So one of the things that we are discussing uh, is the use of cryo-EM for nanoparticles and um, as, uh, aspects related to nanoparticles uh, nucleation. Okay, so one of the projects that we are just discussing is if we can keep track of very initial steps of nucleation in nanoparticles. So would, the process would be more or less the same and then trying to have um, structures of the nanoparticles. And it is interesting because it actually uh, sometimes it works in a different way that we are used to work. But so what we are seeing here are actually nanoparticles, but the liquid here is not water, it's toluene. So preparing samples like that in a material science center is something that is like different from what we usually do uh, in life science. And also for colloids, so we have like different many users actually when we start i think it's i don't have the, the precise number but probably 75 to 80 percent of the initial users that we had for cryo are from material science like colloids area mainly okay, so pharmaceutical sciences and chemistry departments so we have lots of users doing analysis of that type. So they are being trained to prepare their own samples, use the microscope, and for that, equipments like the 1400 are quite handy. Like you don't need high resolution, you just need contrast, and you, you need a good camera. Uh, but projects like that are being very uh, important to our users. And another thing is that we are in a campus that has a, a synchrotron, so Combining techniques is also something important. In our case, for instance, this, this work was done first uh, using SACs, so they were following this aggregation and, and segregation of uh, liposomes due to hyaluronic acid concentration. And they, they have like all the study done in SACs, and then they came to cryoEM, so we were able to provide like good image to all the the phases and also investigate some different aspects that were not access, accessible to SACs. Uh, so we, we believe this is a powerful combination if we can have projects that goes through more than one technique combining with, with cryo. And in this case, for colloids, using um, SACs and combined with cryo-EM is something that seems to be very powerful. So actually this, what we are doing is that there will be this school uh, next, by the end of this month, and we are uh, discussing things like that, like putting together uh, experiments on synchrotron together with uh, cryo-EM. Okay. okay, this is just like different aspects that we could 
observed that were not accessible to sex. Um, another aspect is cooperation and training. So we, a few years ago, we did a f our first users meeting. A few of them were actually users, like people using the technique. Um, most of them are people like that would like to use, or are we are still starting using negative stain. And uh, the majority of them using the microscopes in LL Nano, some of them are now having access to their own microscopes. Um, we, we then had another small meetings in different uh, uh, congresses in, in Brazil. And now by the end of the year, we will have our second users meeting by that time with a bit more users and people having more results. Uh, we also have uh, some cooperation agreements like this one we have with ENL. And actually in December, we are going to ENL to discuss DEUS on, on CryoEM. And an important one was done with uh, this cooperation agreement with Temu Fisher, because when we were discussing uh, the, like what we would need to make the equipments really like working properly in Brazil, so there will be no other Titan Creos, there will be no other Artica, no other K3, no other Falcon 3 around. So of course there will be no personnel trained for that. And uh, so that agreement actually was an important part of the discussion because it will help over the next two years to provide time of application specialists on site, engineering on site, and lots of, of training and, and support. This is, this is really something that for people uh, that never never had the experience on how things like that work in Brazil, um, importing something can take months. So if a board burns, for instance, your equipment can be stopped for months. Like the, the, the closest engineer is probably in the US. So it's really hard and this is something that we ha really have to pay attention to have the proper support to, to make uh, something uh, like that to work properly for us and for our users. Okay. So um, that, that's probably well covered. So still on, on cooperation and training, we have in Latin America this uh, SEBEN, which is the Bio Center for Biology Structural Molecular, so uh, Structural Molecular Biology Center that, uh, that covers the Mercosul which is Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, and now, now Venezuela. So we have these groups together working more or less in the same base as Instruct works, but in a different uh, scale. So those are like the, the labs, like physically, where are the labs of Sebain. And Sebain, one of the important objectives of Sebain is like training and, and support and giving this integration that we need in, in structural biology for like get, giving access to different techniques. And, uh, and cryo-EM is being an important part, an important uh, objective of Sebain for the next years. So, and actually Sebain and Instruct are now, uh, has some memorandums of understanding uh, between both institutions. So, um, since last year, more or less. And Sebain is now supporting Instruct on evaluation, uh, on evaluating memorandums of understanding uh, in South America with institutions in South America. We also are participating in the cited and ultra calls for the next year to run training in, in Brazil in, in cryo microscopy and X-ray crystallography. Okay, so what we are planning is actually to to build a network. Okay. So the idea is to have core facilities, like LMNAN would be one, maybe Rio and Belo Horizonte, where we have like major equipments. And the labs should be like prepared to have their own microscopes. This is most, mostly not the situation now, 
but like having local training, local expertise, being able to evolve their own projects locally in their labs and then come to these core facilities. Um, and of course, these core facilities should have like agreements with other core facilities to exchange experience, users, and for instance, other also networks like Instruct. Okay, so I think that was uh, the overall idea that I would give to you. Uh, thank you very much. And now I open for questions. So thank you.